The purpose of this video is to show you how to correctly use a multimeter. First, let's talk about electricity itself. When electricity is stored in something like a battery or in this wall plug, it's called voltage. Since it hasn't yet been used, it's potential energy. Electricity only flows from a high energy source, the positive, to a low energy source, the negative. Alternating current, or AC voltage, alternates between the positive and negative 60 times a second. That alternating makes the current rough and noisy. Direct current, or DC voltage, does not alternate at all and is smooth and quiet. Electricity always and only travels in circuits. When it's traveling through a circuit, electricity is called current and it's measured in amps. When there's something like a kink in the wire that reduces that current, the amount of that reduction is called resistance and is measured in ohms. And finally, when electricity is used to power something like a motor or a light, it's measured in watts. Now here's a simple circuit. Potential energy is stored in the 1.5 volt battery. A wire runs from the positive end to the switch. A wire runs from the switch to the light bulb, and one more wire runs from the bulb back to the negative end of the battery, completing the circuit. The light bulb should be lit, but it's not. Set the multimeter to measure volts DC. You may see a symbol like this. It means the same thing. In our low energy example, the color of the probes doesn't matter. Red and black are interchangeable here. When you use a multimeter in the real world, the red almost always connects to the positive terminal. Touch one lead to the negative end of the battery, marked with a little minus sign, and the other lead to the positive end. The meter shows us roughly 1.5, which means the 1.5 volt battery is fully charged. If it was considerably less than 1.5, we might replace the battery and see if the bulb lights. Next, let's follow the positive wire to the switch. Leave the probe on the negative end of the battery and touch the other probe to the wire connector. It gives us close to that same number, which means voltage is present at this connector. Now leave the probe on the switch contact and follow the wire from the negative end of the battery to the terminal on the light bulb. It gives us roughly the same number, so we know that that much of the circuit is good. Leave the probe where it is and move the other probe to the other connector on the switch. We get the same reading, so we know voltage is also present at this connector. There are only two possible problems left, this wire or the light bulb. Let's touch the other probe to the other connector on the light bulb. Our meter shows no reading. Let's test it. Move the probe back here on the switch connector. The meter shows us our number. Put the probe on the light bulb, nothing. If we had seen our number at the switch connector, we'd know that the bulb was bad. But by getting no reading, we know there's a problem with the wire. When we replace the wire, the bulb lights. Problem solved. So what's wrong with this wire? First, let's test a normal wire. We want to see if current can flow down the wire, and we do that by looking for resistance. Set the multimeter to ohms, or this symbol. You may see either a K or an M in front of the omega symbol. The K stands for kilo-ohms, or units of a thousand. The M stands for mega-ohms, units of a million. The multimeter sends out current through the red probe and uses the black probe to complete the circuit. Touch the red probe to one end of the wire and the black probe to the other. The meter shows all zeros, which means the wire correctly creates a circuit between the two probes and there's no resistance. The wire is good. Now let's test the damage wire the same way. Now the meter shows OL. The meter is telling us it can't make a circuit because there's a break somewhere in the wire. That's why it couldn't light the bulb. This is a broken circuit. Now this very simple exercise shows you how to use a basic function of a multimeter to check out a circuit. And you'll find electrical circuits everywhere. Your house, the office, your car, even lightning completes an electrical circuit. When there's electricity moving through a circuit, we say it's energized. When you shut off the electricity, the circuit is de-energized. Now, when you use a multimeter, you may be touching electrical connectors in an energized circuit, some with many amps of current and very few ohms of resistance. Here's what you can do to be safe. First, inspect the multimeter case for cracks or signs of damage. If you find anything that seems a little odd, use a different multimeter. Do the same thing for the probes. Never use a probe if it's damaged in the slightest. If possible, de-energize the circuit before you test it. Always be wise when you work with electricity. Assume that if there's a chance you can get shocked, you will. Don't do dumb things like stand in a puddle or work in the rain, and don't lean against or touch the unit when you're taking measurements. Try to set the meter down rather than hold it in your hands as you check an energized circuit. If there's a sudden surge, it'll go through the meter rather than through you. If you're measuring resistance, make sure the circuit is de-energized. Checking resistance on a live circuit will blow the fuse inside your multimeter or, at best, give you bad readings.
If you have a probe plugged into the 10 amp or 300 milliamp jack, never touch it to a voltage source. This is another way to quickly blow up the fuse in your multimeter. When you're taking a reading, don't touch the metal parts of the probes and don't touch any metal other than what you're measuring. You could cause a short and potentially an arc flash when electricity jumps through the air from one component to another. Replace the battery in the multimeter the moment you get a low battery warning. Make sure the multimeter is rated to handle the voltage present in the circuit. The multimeter comes with different probes for different circumstances. If you're taking readings on terminal blocks, contactors, circuit breakers, or motor terminals, use the 2mm probes. If you're going to measure the back of a connector, use a needle probe. Don't use a 2mm probe, you might damage your connections. Set the multimeter to the highest setting on the feature you're measuring, the highest voltage, amperage, or resistance. When you touch your probes, watch the display. If you don't get a valid reading, click the knob to the next lowest setting and test it again. If you don't get a valid reading, set the knob lower still. Keep going until you get a meaningful reading. To keep the reading, push the hold button and the measurement will remain on the screen. When you're done with the meter, turn the knob to the off position. Now there are a thousand other things to learn about working with a multimeter, but those all come with experience. Memorize the electrical symbols, understand the differences between AC and DC, and between voltage, amperage, and resistance, and treat electricity with respect, and you'll find that a multimeter is an extremely useful and extremely helpful tool.